Stardom, the final frontier of women's wrestling. Some of the best wrestlers in the world have come from this once smallish promotion. Now they are a juggernaut that has grown its roster to over 30 wrestlers. Since the last roster guide, lots, and I mean lots, have changed. Multiple betrayals and a whole new faction. This is going to be a long one, so I'm going to just get right into it. But one quick disclaimer, it is hard to get rid of your own personal biases here. So there are certain factions and or wrestlers that might feel like I'm being more negative than others. It's just, it's just how it's going to be. Alright, let's get to it. We are starting out with Stardom's quintessential good guys. Stars are the babyface faction, with most of the wrestlers being goody two-shoes or underdogs. This is also the faction with the most people defecting from it, so take that info how you wish. The faction is led by Mayu Iwatani, Stardom's icon, the only wrestler still around who debuted with the company. She has held her ground going from Lost Cause underdog to one of the best wrestlers in the world, originally making a name for herself by being a bump expert and teaming up with Io Shirai in Stardom's most powerful tag team in history, Thunder Rock. She stands at 5'5", which back in the day made her one of the tall wrestlers, but current day Stardom makes it so that she is about average height amongst her peers. She is one of Stardom's only Grand Slam champions, and the first and only wrestler to hold both the red and the white belt at the same time. Outside of the ring, Mayu is an enigma. For someone so in control and graceful in the ring, she is a walking travesty to the point that whatever another wrestler talks about making a mistake like going to the wrong arena or oversleeping, people call it pulling a Mayu. With all that said, for how she started out, the fact that she is one of the biggest names in the industry now is amazing. Saya Ida is a special wrestler in the promotion. Her being the smallest one standing at 4 foot 9 doesn't stop her from being one of the strongest and most impressive talents amongst the next generation. Her improvement since her debut only a little over 3 years ago has been one of the biggest improvements in the company. Going from a very basic boring wrestler to someone who you could legit base your entire promotion around if you wanted to. She hasn't achieved much in the promotion, getting severely injured right when she won her first belt, and being out for a long time, almost an entire year. She is back though, and expected to really start doing something special. She has become a fan favorite online due to her being so tiny, but so jacked. Her name, Gori, is in reference to a gorilla. Her other nickname, Giant Saya, is a kind of joke that caught on because there are two Sayas in stardom and the other was called Tall Saya by the fandom, and so others started calling Ida Giant Saya. Hannon is the oldest of the sisters of stardom. As per tradition, the wrestler with the most promise who is still in high school tends to get the nickname JK Fighter. Momo Watanabe had it and so did Izumi for a short while. Like her sisters, she was very active in judo for a long time before joining up with wrestling, so a lot of her moveset is a derivative of that skill set. Like most of the wrestlers who have been underage for the last couple of years, her achievements in stardom are very small and limited, but with her reaching the age of leaving high school, she might have an explosion of success in the near future. Koguma is a returnee from the old era of stardom. She came in and showed she was serious contender, beating Io Shirai for the high speed title shortly after her first year. She left very soon in her career and has been gone until her return not too long ago. She appeared in a special Royal Rumble match in March of 2021, then made her official return in June of the same year. She has kept her old nickname High Speed Genius, even though her wrestling has changed quite a bit from her being a completely different physique than before. Now she is a partner of Hazuki and has even won the tag title since her return. She has proved her spot in her return in many ways, but one of them was her willingness to do crazy stunts in her ladder match in December of 2021. She has a bear gimmick to her as well, 
because Koguma is a play on the word bear in Japanese, which I believe is Kuma. You will see her in a less serious matches doing a bear pose and trying to get her opponents to do it too. Even though she is a return E, she is still very young and has a very bright future ahead of her. Hazuki has one of the strangest histories when it comes to stardom, to the point that there are even rumors that she is somehow connected to the Yakuza. There was even speculation that she was in a secret relationship with her mentor, Kagetsu. When she left stardom in 2019, she left in a very bad way, saying very cryptic but damaging things about stardom, resulting in many rumors on what could have possibly been the reason for her way out. Nothing has ever been confirmed or even had anything that might make one rumor more likely than the rest. To this day, we still don't have an explanation on what was truly going on, even after she returned in 2021. She had some ring rust on her return, but has all but recovered to her old skill. Pretty much her entire career in stardom, she has either been a tweener or a heel, spending most of her time in Queen's Quest and then Odo Tai. So when she returned and joined Stars, it was a bit of a shock to some. So far, we are seeing closer to Queen's Quest Hazuki with her partnership with Koguma and seeing pretty decent success. Momo Kogo, also known online as Komomo, is one of the newest additions to stardom and one of the many wrestlers who left Actress Girls to join stardom. While her birth year is hidden on all official stardom websites, her true age is being speculated online. There is a source of her being listed around 37 years old, which would make her the oldest signed wrestler on the roster. It's kind of hard to believe though because, I mean, just look at her. Does she look 37 to you? She has only been wrestling for a couple of years and it shows. She is very green, but also surprisingly good at certain things. For example, her 619 has no right being as good as it is for her skill level. Next we have what used to be my favorite faction, Queen's Quest. Originally created by Io Shirai and setting out to make Stardom's Ring the best wrestling ring in the world, it has had a huge transformation over time. They went from somewhat being heels to being the promotion's quintessential tweener faction. For years they didn't respect you unless you had the skill. They fought each other to their death and then went out to eat with each other afterwards. They respected real power and nothing else. Nowadays, they are more of a regular face faction with elements of their old nature still sprinkled in. They have arguably some of the most talented wrestlers in the promotion and are usually somewhat involved in the main storyline or belt scene. Utami Hayashishita is the current leader of Queen's Quest and one of the top names in the promotion. Many of you know my feelings about her, how I believe she is overpushed beyond her ability and her getting almost every achievement possibly you can get handed to her in her first year of wrestling ever has soured me and lots of people to her. There are also a lot of people who truly love her though and think she is one of the best around. She started out as a power wrestler with a bit of technical thrown in but has since transitioned into what I would call a big match wrestler. Outside of the ring she is known for her somewhat famous family and many many siblings. She is also a huge Pokemon fan collecting merch all of the time. She seems like a really fun person um, to her co-workers that they like to be around and goof with. Azumi to a lot of people should have been the new leader of Queen's Quest after Momo's defection. Although she is very young, she is one of the most experienced wrestlers on the roster, having been wrestling since 9 years old and debuting at 11. She is very close to her 10 year anniversary and she is only 19 years old. She has received praise from world-class wrestlers like Will Ospreay. For a long time, the only thing stopping her from great achievements was her young age, spending most of her early career being pin fodder for Queen's Quest, even though she was the most talented amongst many of her peers. If you look at her now, she seems like a confident and cool-headed person, but she wasn't always like that. She used to be a little brat that would call anyone older than 18 a grandma, even making some of her opponents cry from her harsh words about their age. She sees the high-speed belt as her main goal after debuting against Natsuki Tayo, a high-speed genius herself. Saya Kamatani is either going to be considered one of the greatest of all time, or she's going to have to retire early from injury. She is the epitome of, if you aren't first, you're last. 
she has made a name for herself as being quite the daredevil, pulling off moves that haven't been seen in Joshi either in a very long time or ever. She is one of the very few women to have pulled off the move Phoenix Splash, which is a marvel every time she pulls it out. If she is in a big match, you can guarantee that she will do something to create a wow moment. Outside of the ring, she is a walking info leak and kind of a ditz. She was in a bit of a gimmick not too long ago where stardom would have to keep her from spilling secret information because she just couldn't help it. Regardless though, she is going to be one of the best ever, if she doesn't hurt herself. Hina is the next in the Sisters of Stardom and one half of the twin sisters. She used to be in the background a lot more, not really standing out compared to the others her age. After taking a break from wrestling, mostly likely to focus on schoolwork, she came back with a vengeance. She has been more prominent and showing more promise than ever since her return. She is my favorite out of the three sisters, but they are all pretty great. Many believe that one day the three sisters are going to unite again and create an unstoppable three-person team and have a team so unstoppable that they rival the legendary Threedom. Lady C is an ex-teacher who decided to become a wrestler. No, that's not her gimmick, that's actually true. She is also the tallest Joshi wrestler active, and there is debate if she is the tallest ever. She is very low on the card and loses pretty much all of her matches, but she is still very interesting to watch. Her development into a giant role has been intriguing, wondering what moves she plans on adding to her moveset. Usually giants are associated with strength, but her frame doesn't really allow that for the most part. Outside the ring, she has said she makes her own gear, and she even patches up others' gear before the show if there is a malfunction. Using her skills as a home and economics teacher, she knows a lot about sewing. Miyu Amasaki is Stardom's newest trainee debut. She is incredibly green, but you can see that she is trying her best. She is pretty young, so she has plenty of time to improve, but she shows a bit of promise, not really dragging matches down like most rookies tend to do. There isn't much to say at this point in her career, but like all Stardom rookies, I'm sure she will make a name for herself eventually. Donna Del Mondo has kind of taken the spot Queen's Quest filled before. They are the faction that are the most tweener. They are also the most protected and overpushed faction in the promotion, each member having some of the best win percentages and lowest personal loss percentages in the company. They are made up entirely of wrestlers from other promotions who joined stardom after leaving their original promotion. The DDM bump is so extensive that someone who lost almost every single match would go on a winning streak just after joining them. That doesn't mean most of the members aren't talented, because they are. Most of them were either on their way to the top or already at the top of their previous promotion before jumping ship to stardom. Julia has become a main pillar of stardom. After leaving Ice Ribbon in a very controversial manner, she forced herself into the main event, starting feud after feud and showing her ability to create incredibly interesting storylines. Not everything was peachy in the beginning of her stardom run though, as she seemed to have incredible timing issues, which would mess up quite often. She has since fixed that issue and has been a part of many match of the year contenders. She is one of the promotion's pure ultimate entertainers. Mika was trained by Taka Michinoku, a legend in male Japanese wrestling. She was the top wrestler in her promotion, Just Tap Out, before joining Stardom and more specifically, DDM. She has been a main player since joining. Her style in the beginning made her not really stand out as much, as everything she was good at another wrestler in the promotion was more well known for. She has since found a way to stand out and become her own wrestler, having one of the best aesthetics in the entire promotion. The Jumbo Princess Himika was one of the early jumping ship people that we see a lot of now. She joined shortly after Julia did. She was making a big name for herself in Actress Girls, but ended up leaving the company. She disappeared for a while and we later found out that she was considering quitting wrestling altogether. It wasn't until Julia convinced her to join Stardom and start hitting the gym that she decided to come back. She lost a lot of weight to the point that some didn't even recognize her the first time she appeared in Stardom. 
Since then, she has been DDM's giant, usually clashing with other power wrestlers in the promotion. Thecla is the only wrestler that has joined recently that I had never seen before she joined Stardom. She was pretty popular and well-liked outside of stardom, though. She seems to be very quirky and likes to stand out when she's in a crowd. In the ring, she is incredibly fluid and talented. She has achieved a decent success since joining stardom after being part of a storyline where she would attack stardom wrestlers while wearing a mask of the online myth character Momo. My Sakurai was one of the lowest on the totem pole wrestlers in stardom as her abilities in the ring were not that great. Her being somewhat new allowed some leeway, though, like with most rookies. Once she joined DDM, though, all of a sudden she was getting win after win and was shot up the card despite her abilities not matching that improvement. Odotai is the oldest faction out of the current list. It was created even before the subtitle era of stardom. Originally created by Kyoko Kimura and Act Yasukawa, it was always a safe haven for foreigners. It has since transformed over the years until it is what it is today, a bunch of wrestlers who just hate the status quo. Natsuko Tora is the current leader of Odotai, but I wouldn't fault you for not knowing that as she has been out with an injury for a very, very long time. Every now and then we get a glimpse of her during important Odotai matches. Since taking over Odotai, she has completely reinvented herself, going from a lifetime of second in command to being the one in charge for the first time. Before her injury, she was in the main event scene and fast becoming one of the more popular wrestlers on the card, at least amongst foreign fans. Saki is a pretty interesting tale in stardom, being actually from the debut of the promotion. She ended up leaving wrestling for a while before coming back. She joined up with Mayu and was a very bland face, until she betrayed Mayu in what is still one of the most brutal betrayals in stardom, just from what she said to her during. Now she is a bit more interesting, but still kind of a background character, except in the ring. She is one of the most underappreciated when it comes to in-ring ability. She is incredibly talented, being one of the few spoilers used by the company. She has singles wins, over pretty much any of the top card in the promotion at this point. Rina is the last of the sisters of stardom and the other half of the twins. She has always been more outgoing and charismatic than the other two sisters. She really didn't make any splashes until being taken under the wing of the late Hanakamura, copying a lot of her style and personality traits. After Hana's passing, Rina has since distanced herself from being a copy of her and now is more of her own person who pays homage from time to time. Ruaka is probably one of the wrestlers with the biggest transformation. She went from a pretty meek and mild face to a dangerous heel. Once she joined Odotai, she has become a force to be reckoned with, and she has found her aggression she was missing during her underage years of wrestling. Fukikin Death is always the hardest to talk about in these videos, as she is really the only wrestler who has changed personas multiple times throughout her time in stardom. Her real name is Kaori Yoniyama, and she is a Joshi legend who has been around for a long time. She is the other spoiler in stardom where she doesn't ever win big, but is used to getting a surprise win over the top card in tournaments. She is one of the most skilled people wrestling at stardom currently, and she seems happy to be in a lesser comedic role. She has gone by Kaori Yonayama, Death Yamasan, and Gokigan Death while at stardom because she was possessed by a demon clown. Starlight Kid is someone I've talked a lot about on my channel. I even have an entire video talking about the duality of Starlight Kid and Azumi. She is one of those wrestlers that started as a child and has just recently reached adulthood and given opportunities to really shine. She is also the only masked wrestler in stardom, with her face never having been shown for her entire career. Unless you consider that one picture of a trainee that disappeared right around the time that Starlight Kid debuted, that's about it. She had always been a face her entire career, but was stolen by Odotai in a match, and then chose to stay and go her own way, becoming a heel for the first time in her career. Momo Watanabe is my favorite wrestler as you all know very well. She made a name for herself by betraying Mayu and the other faces of the promotion and joining up with Io Shirai in the new Queen's Quest faction. 
She would take up the role of top of the promotion after Io Shirai left, along with Kagetsu, keeping stardom great to watch. Her white belt run in which she got the defense record is legendary. Unfortunately, if you started watching stardom in the last couple of years, you wouldn't really understand why she is so well loved. Since losing the white belt, stardom seems to have moved on from her and she hasn't gotten anything special since. She eventually betrayed Queen's Quest and joined Odo Tai where she is there to this day. God's Eye is the newest faction to be created. When Shiri split off from Donna Del Mondo, she became her own leader. God's Eye is also the smallest of the factions with only three members in stardom and one new member from Just Tap Out, Tomoka Inaba. Since they are so new, there are no achievements as of yet, with their greatest achievement being Shuri with a red belt, but she held that before creating the faction. Shuri is one of the most real dangerous Joshi wrestlers in the business. She's essentially the Brock Lesnar of Joshi, with her real life fighting skills and record being held and bled into her wrestling persona. When coming into stardom and joining Donna Del Mondo, she is the only one who got a rocket strapped to her back that the fans really had no problem with. Her skills on the ring were enough to silence any dissension to her push. She is one of the most protected wrestlers in stardom, having one of the lowest personal loss records out of anyone in stardom history. Mirai was a later addition to Donna Del Mondo and left with Shuri to make God's Eye. She is another new addition from another promotion who got a rocket strapped to her back winning the Cinderella tournament already in her very short career. She's one of the many power wrestlers in the promotion, having very little that makes her stand out even from her other stablemate Ami. She is pretty talented for her experience level, having a lot of force behind her moves, especially her lariats. Ami Sore is the only wrestler I have no knowledge of. She joined after I took a break from watching and haven't seen more than three matches of her since. From what I can tell, she has little to make her stand out from other power wrestlers, being a somewhat generic color swap of Mirai from my understanding. She is still really new to wrestling, so having nothing that makes you stand out this early in career is very common and in no way is an indicator of where they will end up a couple years from now. Cosmic Angels has become my favorite faction. I used to be a hardcore Queen's Quest fan, but they fell to second place because of this group. This group is made up of the most entertaining wrestlers in the promotion. They may not be the most talented in the ring, but they understand the entertainment element of wrestling better than most of the promotion. With one of them always doing something to continue some feud or storyline, this group almost single-handedly keeps a story going in stardom. My love for Tam Nakano is not a secret. I have gone on record saying I believe she is the best overall wrestler in stardom. There are people better in the ring than her, but no one is able to bring the emotion and investment into a storyline like Tam. She is a special case of completely understanding what makes something interesting, while also having the skills in the ring to appease the people who only care about in-ring skills. Although she won't ever be put on top with the red belt most likely, her legacy in stardom is one of a greatest of all time. Mina is someone who came from Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. She was fairly green when joining stardom, but was able to get attention by being in a storyline where the other wrestlers were obsessed with her boobs. Her dreams was to be respected and talented wrestler like Yuzapan, another grab your wrestler who had to battle the preconceptions of being an attractive woman with big boobs. She wants to be the second coming of Yuzapan and show that grab your wrestlers are just as good as everyone else. Unagi was the third addition to the faction back when they were still a part of Stars and split from them to become Cosmic Angels. Unagi is also a gravier model, having done a lot more risque videos than Mina Shirakawa. While she is also technically a gravier wrestler like Mina, she is less described by the gravier element as she seems to only want to be known for what she does in the ring. She is the problem child of the faction, constantly harassing and mouthing off to other factions and other promotion wrestlers, always starting some kind of fight and considers herself stardom's assessor to newcomers. Waka has the longest losing streak in stardom and just Joshi in general. From what I can find, she has only ever won one match, her first match of 2021, but she has never personally won a victory over someone before. It has become part of her character, and while she isn't that great in the ring, 
everyone kind of hopes that maybe this time she will get the win. While this isn't always a bad way to start, as Mayu was very similar in her legendary losing streak in the beginning of her career, and look where she is now. Waka could very one day be one of the best. Who knows? Natsupoi is the newest addition to the faction and the only one to have had betrayed a faction to join. She used to be in DDM and very recently decided she was tired of being DDM's pet and mascot. She wanted to achieve something big, and she wanted to do that beside Tam. Tam and her have a very deep and long history that predates either's time in stardom, and now they want to achieve greater heights together. Now, Tsupoi is a pretty great high-speed wrestler, being able to keep up with the great high-speed wrestlers of stardom like Azumi and Starlight Kid. Phew, that is a lot of wrestlers. Stardom has grown into something that is unbelievable. The roster size alone makes them a juggernaut. They have collected the largest, most diverse talent pool in Joshi, while simultaneously growing their audience outside of what other promotions could possibly achieve. I've said it for a while, but no matter what, when you get into stardom, there will always be at least one wrestler that fits what you were looking for. It's very easy to find a favorite. The only downside to the changes that stardom has gone through over the years is that it's becoming very prevalent that they do not hold a value of putting in your dues being rewarded, as pretty much every single wrestler being pushed and backed is either someone from another promotion or someone who has chosen to be on top from the very start. So it can kind of be frustrating for longtime viewers. If you have ever seen someone scoff or roll their eyes when they hear about Utami or Julia or just any DDM member winning another big match, that's why. To a lot of people, it feels like the wrestlers who were there and pushed themselves to their limits to hold stardom up during dark periods are cannon fodder to people jumping ship now that stardom is one of the only financially stable companies during and after COVID. So I hope you liked the video. I know I was a bit harsh on certain wrestlers or factions, but that stuff is a huge reason my passion for stardom was burnt. It felt like you could no longer pick a favorite and see their story, but that everyone was there just to be fed to DDM and Utami. Companies change for better or for worse, regardless. They still put on banger shows and matches that you just can't find anywhere else.